afternoon, everybody, and I call this meeting the March 25th meeting of the Rome City Commission to order, and we appreciate all of our guests being here. We start every meeting off uh, with a prayer and a pledge to the flag, and uh, tonight Commissioner Wayne Robinson is going to do that, and if you will, if you feel like it, stand up and join us. Thank you. We would bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us all here safely tonight. Uh, be with us as we discuss issues that affect our city and help us to make wise decisions. Uh, thanks to everyone that serves on our city and be with them and their families and keep them well. And Lord, help us all to remember that you and only you are in control of all things and we are here to serve you. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 If you will uh, call the roll. Yes, sir. Mayor <clears throat> McDaniel. Here. Commissioner Bojo. Here. Brock. Here. Beeman. Here. Doss. Here. Quick. Here. Collins. Here. Robinson. Here. Commissioner Mark Cochran uh, is not with us tonight. He had a death in the family. He notified me uh, late this afternoon. And if you will, keep he and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I think you've all had the opportunity to look at the minutes of the March 11th, 2024 meeting. Without any, uh, if no one has comments, we will approve those by common consent. We have no proclamations and we have no registered guests. We have uh, two resolutions, and I'm going to call on our attorney, uh, Mr. Andy Davis, to go through those for us, please. Thank you. I will entertain a motion uh, to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir, Commissioner Collins. The quote was expressed to the full commission that I would not be voting in favor of this here civility or this code of ethics. But I do want to explain to the this in the audience, as well as anybody who followed Bill Collins over these past 20, 30 years, I know all about ethics. I know all about the order of conduct, etc. <clears throat> I want to give you a quick example of a first paragraph in this here. City of Rome, City Commission Code of Conduct. One of the first sentences says, during the City Commission meeting, directed appointed officials shall provide order and decor to the staff about not interrupting 
not delaying the pro delay, uh, delay in the process. Throughout this here page, I'm glad you got it up there. Lots better on my eyes, but throughout this here page, it has simple things of check ties, and in my opinion, a commissioner, uh, a grown-up, etc. Our statute puts in place the opportunity that all commissioners sit on this here board had the same power, I don't care whether you're mayor, mayor pro temp, et cetera, you're elected by the people. Every one of us sits in these chairs of grown-ups, it's age limit. It's a way, in fact, you expect it to act. When I seen this here information and asked to sign it, I felt like maybe <laughs> no different when you purchase an automobile or insurance, et cetera, or something, you have put your name to it. You expect it to go exactly by these rules. I checked with the attorney, and he said, well, that means a grievance. I mean, you know, you really is interrupting this meeting, or you are really demonstrating in a different manner. It don't really mean like, you know, you're gonna make this mistake to say, well, you know, you went over your time limit, et cetera, et cetera. But that ain't what you sign up for. I don't mean to be long, Mr. Mayor, and I'll cut this short, but I want it, at least my family, and the family of the people who support myself, and, this commission to understand and know that I know the difference when it's fair to all and when it could put yourself in a position to, I'm not just talking about this here board. The last code of ethics lasted more than 20 years. It'll be a time that a person like myself and a person like Craig McDaniel and the ones that you're looking at up here will be well gone. This will be in place. I want my grandson and my kids to know that from my perspective, <clears throat> I want to make sure that all, whether it's five votes, whether it's someone sitting there that don't know a hoot about Bill Collins, know that he stood in his mind what was fair and what was right. That's just from this chair here. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? My only comment, Mayor. You're good. My only com comment is that uh, I think this is a very proper ordinance, and I strongly support it. Thank you. Any other comments? I do see here that, and I, that where it says elected and appointed officials may express different ideas. Equitable representation helps promote unity of purpose by allowing the public to be informed of each member's position during his or her term of office and not only during an election campaign. That means that we all have a voice, right? The only thing I want to say is, you know, it's not meant to discourage energetic conversations, which from time to time we've got to have. I mean, you don't agree with 100 percent of everything. So uh, an energetic conversation is good. Uh, out of line is not good. But that's, that's all I am. I agree with that. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, call the question, please. Mr. Clerk, if you will, call the roll. Yes, sir. <coughs> Commissioner Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. Beeman? <coughs> yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? No. Robinson? Yes. Let me down for a yes, please. 
Uh, first reading, we had an alcohol ordinance amendment. We're not going to cover that tonight. Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, we need two votes. We voted on the, con, uh, the conduct resolution. We also have the, the civilian. That's why he's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I got him on both sides. Good help. Keep me out of trouble. Okay. Is there anything else you need to say about the uh, city of civility? You, you covered it. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion. And Second. From Commissioner Quick. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I would like to say that the city of civility was actually developed as a program through the Georgia Municipal Association a little over a year ago. All surrounding cities of Rome have agreed to go by this as a model of public decorum and professionalism, and I highly recommend this commission do the same. I want to say I, this past session of uh, Georgia Municipal Association, I attended uh, two six-hour workshops on ethics. Um, and I sat in those workshops with city commissioners and mayors from all over the state of Georgia. Um, ethics is an issue for a lot of governments. You have personality differences. Um, and when people disagree, sometimes it gets to be very disagreeable. And I think we learned some lessons last year. Um, we have the best city in the state of Georgia. I don't, I'll debate that with anybody, and I'll win that debate 10 times out of 10. Um, the city commissioners need to represent the best and our behavior needs to be above reproach. And I think this city of civility uh, recognition makes a statement to other communities in Georgia that not only do we respect each other, but we respect the people who put us here. And that's the most important respect that we could earn because that's why we're here. Any other comments? I would just say that what the mayor just told you, he's absolutely right. I said in some of those same meetings with him, and I was the first time they brought this civility up. It was uh, championed by the uh, leader of GMA, and I brought it back and I handed it to Mr. Manager and I told him because I think we was all in the same meeting, but I thought it was a very great thing that the uh, GMA had brought up, and it's very good. Any other comments? <coughs> Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Sir. Commissioner Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. <clears throat> Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Yes, also, please. Sir. <clears throat> On first reading tonight, we have an assembly permit ordinance amendment. Uh, we won't discuss it tonight. It's on first reading. We'll have public hearing on it in two weeks. We have nothing on second reading, nothing continued on first reading. Uh, we do have a public hearing uh, to adopt the City of Rome Code of Ethics. That was just the second, the second reading. And that's why he's there. <laughs> Will be the second reading. Um, we discussed the City of Rome Code of Ethics at uh, two weeks ago. We've discussed this um, on a number of occasions with the Rome City Commission, and I will entertain a motion. Well, I'll open up the public hearing. I don't have to open up public hearing. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Code of Ethics. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Yes, sir. Commissioner Bojo? Yes. <clears throat> Brock? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. <clears throat> Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. 
put me down for a yes, please. sir. Thank you. And we have two uh, rec uh, two items that come from the Planning Commission, Commissioner Quick. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the first is Z24-03-01. It is a request to rezone from low density traditional residential to multifamily residential for the property located at number two Leon Street, Rome, Georgia 30165, Floyd County tax parcel I13L254. It comes with the Planning Commission recommendation of approval unanimous. Ralph, let me ask you a question. The condition from the Planning Commission was that they run background checks. I hereby open the uh, public hearing. Is anyone here to speak in favor? Give us your name and address, please.
Bryce, I have a question. If, uh, if she said you, you said you're undecided right now if it's going to be duplexes or townhomes. Um, well, we had started with the uh, idea of doing duplexes, but based on what uh, from the last meeting that they had to be facing the road, um, we're deciding that doing townhomes would be better since they would look nicer like facing the road and we can make them look um, not anything high end, but like you know. My question was going to be for Bryce. Will that require a different zoning for townhomes versus duplexes? Okay. okay, thank you. Can I, can I ask a question to her, Ms. Lane? What's your name? Joanne. Joanne, I'm curious to know, you self-impose the background check. Is your reservation coming from pretty much the same reservation thinking um, but I'm curious to hear as to, to how you arrive at that No, I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, that answers it for me. I was thinking a totally different route <coughs> because of the fact that your neighbor crossed the street. So that's genuine. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak in favor of? Anyone here to speak in opposition? I now close public hearing. Um, and I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the rezoning request from low density traditional residential to multifamily residential for this property. I'll second it. We have a motion and second. <clears throat> Any discussion? So I've got a question. Does your motion include the requirement for background checks? Considering the fact that the couple making the request already does the, the background checks, the background checks will eliminate any possibility of the concerns that brought that motion forward in that meeting. My question about that is if they turn around and sell the property. I would be clear in that motion right. or somebody amend that motion. We don't have the ability to require that because she's, if she sells it next week, right. there can't be a chain of obligation going on to. The motion is only to rezone from low density traditional residential to multifamily residential. Have that motion. No, I'll second. Motion, the, second. Any discussion? Is the face the street requirement in there? which I believe was the staff recommended condition. 
Do we, do we need to put the face the street requirement? If, or since you have already made the determination that you're going with townhomes as opposed to the duplex, then we do want to make sure that we have a face the street for aesthetic purposes. Got it. Okay, Mr. Clerk, if you will call the roll. Sir. Commissioner Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Socket one, uh, Commissioner Quick. The second item is Z24-03-02. It is a request to rezone from community commercial to high density traditional residential for the properties located at Calhoun Avenue at 617 Calhoun Avenue, Floyd County Tax Parcel K13Y271 and K13Y272. This also comes with a recommendation of approval unanimously from the Planning Commission. I now open the public hearing. Is anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Bryce will have to do that, Bill. He's got control of that. Roll that picture down, Bryce. If you will, uh, give us your name and your address, please. Anyone else uh, here to speak in favor? Anyone speak in opposition? I hereby close the public hearing. We'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve this request to rezone from com community commercial to high density traditional residential. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Clark, call the roll. Commissioner Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. You're approved. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clark, do you have anything? No report, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor, I would um, like to announce um, this coming Friday, March 29th, in observance of the Good Friday holiday, the city administrative offices will be closed and we will have a change in our garbage pickup. So both the Thursday and Friday routes are going to be serviced on Thursday this week. And the Walker Mountain landfill will also be closed on Friday. And the only other change is we will not be able to service yard carts this week. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney. Thank you. So I'll move, entertain Mr. Mayor. a motion. So move. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? And had this ever been done before in Rome? There have been cranes uh, have, have you know, been in Rome for buildings, but this is the first that I'm aware of this has been an air easement that we needed to do. We have done air easements for other properties. Any other uh, comments or questions? Mr. Clark, call the roll. Mr. Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. <clears throat> Under my time, the uh, Joint Services Committee will meet Tuesday, April the 2nd at 9 a.m. in Sam King Room. I want to mention two things uh, that happened this past week. Um, several of us went on a FAM tour. Um, initially, I thought that was family tour, but it's familiarization tour with the Ron Floyd Development Authority, uh, Missy Kendrick and her team. Um, it, you know, if you serve as a mayor, you serve on the Ron Floyd Development Authority. Um, I have, I thought I knew a little bit about economic development and industrial development, and I realized I'm, I'm, just void of knowledge. It is so amazing, the industrial parks that we have, the buildings that we have available, all of the land that we have available, and the professionalism of Missy and her team. Um, I worked in economic development for a long time when I was at college. I have never been involved in a presentation like that. I've worked all throughout Northwest Georgia. And uh, if you have a chance, um, those of you that went, if you have a chance to uh, thank Missy and members of the Development Authority, J uh, Jimmy Byers chairs that uh, group. Um, we've got a we've got a jewel, and we're very lucky to have what we have. Another thing, um, I attended a meeting over in Dawsonville uh, regarding the opioid settlement. I was a voting delegate along with. Um, uh, Floyd County Commission Chair Allison Waters and um, uh, ACCG Executive Director made the presentation and there are delegates um, I was a voting delegate and, and Allison was but we voted on the people that will sit on the opioid settlement team and we have a member the lady that runs um, um, Living Proof Recovery 
is serving on that committee. She was approved to serve on the committee uh, as a recovering addict. <clears throat> and we, I, I had a chance to speak with her, and Allison did as well. Uh, she's a very impressive lady, but um, this, this group has been put together. Uh, Governor Kemp is, is basically managing this. Andy, I don't know if there's anything that you want to say, but anyway, so the, all of the members of the opioid opioid task force um, the settlement committee have been appointed now with the state uh, and it um, as part of that memorandum of understanding these are the funds that the city did not get individually these are funds that that went to the state and are being distributed by the state and how the state set up these different areas and the regions to then administer funds. So this is in addition to what the city gets individually on opioids. Okay. Uh, finance committee, Commissioner Bojo, Mayor Pro Tem Bojo. Yeah, finance committee's the meeting that was scheduled for Wednesday, March 27th has been canceled. Keep Room Beautiful will meet uh, Wednesday afternoon, four o'clock. It says the Eco Center, but we'll be meeting at the um, Floyd County Administration offices. And uh, Water and Sewer will meet Thursday, April 4th in the Sam King room. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Brock. No report. Commissioner Cochran is not here. He has no reports. Uh, Commissioner Beeman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would like to report that up under the library board um, tonight at the Vision Center, the first time that the library board has actually, <laughs> Sarah Hotel Regional Library has brought budgeting finances and uh, financial literacy to the Vision Center to, the, uh, to increase participation. So they took the wheels to the Vision Center. So I was real proud of that. They had a great turnout. It happened, that took place from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So they're wrapping up. So this is the first time that we actually have uh, the Sarah Regional Library uh, Library Commission taking information to the neighborhood. And I was real proud of that. They did that graciously. And also up under tour tourism, we'll be meeting at, uh, at the Battery Business Complex at, off Division Street at the Old Northwest Regional Hospital this Wednesday with the Georgia Emergency <coughs> Management Association and Homeland Security Explosive Ordnance Detection K-9 Teams Training. This is a very unique opportunity for us and an event for the office is sponsoring. So the teams will be here all over the Southeast. So we're excited about that. And that concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Beeman. Landmarking, uh, well, Commissioner Doss. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, under landmarking, uh, the committee will have a landmark plaque ceremony Thursday, April 4th. That's gonna be next Thursday, April 4th at 12.30 p.m at St. Mary's Catholic Church, and the address is 911 Broad Street. And so um, anyone that has an interest in our landmarking committee and our ceremony and uh, St. Mary's Catholic Church, um, please, you're invited to, to attend. Uh, this will be our second ceremony of the year, thankful Baptist, Baptist Church just up the street from the Catholic Church was our first landmarking ceremony of the year. And just under uh, public works, traffic, transit, and trails, uh, I've seen some pictures on Facebook of the uh, progress of our Mount Berry Trail. Uh, that trail is coming along at a very quick pace, and no pun intended, uh, and we'll connect and we'll have a loop. and. Uh, I got a message from Commissioner Beeman that she and her husband were on the, the trail, and you have to admit that's a beautiful trail, isn't it? Yes, it's really nice. It's great. So uh, I encourage you, if, if you haven't been on the Mount Berry Trail, you're missing something very special. So uh, thank you, Mayor. That's it. Thank you. Let me ask a question. I had someone ask me today about the signage that's going on the trails. Do you know what the timeline is, or Sammy, you may know? Yeah, y'all may recall we, we um, worked with the PATH Foundation to help us with the, the branding effort and 
It last um, update I had is hopefully when we are able to complete the Mount Berry uh, final segment that will complete our loop that we're going to try to have the signage rolled out um, at that same time. And so, uh, and as was stated, it's moving very, very quickly. So it's it's exciting time for uh, our trail users. Thank you. Commissioner Quick. Only one meeting announcement, Mr. Mayor. The Rome Floyd County Planning Commission will meet on Thursday, April 4th, 2.30 p.m. here in the Sam King Room, and that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a report on Northwest Regional Commission and other parts and rec, but I would like to thank uh, Mr. Manager and, of course, Ms. Kelly and who all else was involved for the field trip that happened today over on Hardy Avenue. Our partners with the Rome City School, of course, is opening up this Parents Resource Center. I got there a little bit early today, learned a little bit about this here process that they're trying to involve the parents and the grandparents of these kids that go to our Rome City Schools throughout the city of Rome. And it was very exciting, first off, to see that the old Anna K. Davis building, as beautiful as it is, and back up and offer the opportunity for education. Uh, and this time around, it's for old seniors like myself, being a grandparents, and even these parents to encourage them to go there and, and to learn more about how to hold a book. I didn't even know that was a simple thing that possible was that important, as well as the opportunity to, to sit down with their kids and grandbabies to teach them the importance of reading and I can't help but just know how important this was today to not only learn this but being a business person or just a parent to get involved with donating old shoes or new shoes to these kids or their parents might go by the center and pick up a pair of underwear, book pack, um, they can even go there if you're in that neighborhood or you don't have to be in that neighborhood. They offer a chance for you to actually wash your clothes, make an appointment. <coughs> Man, if, <laughs> if I had something like that back in the days, it would have been very important to me. And I hope that someone up under my voice and not even just take my word for it, this place is now open. It's at 200 Hardy Avenue and Rome, Georgia. Mr. Mayor, Sammy, y'all want to add anything at all? No, I, it was a good tour. I, I want to commend Dr. Holland and his um, team for identifying one of the big problems in the Rome City School System is literacy. One of the key components of literacy is a lot of these kids, they go home to a household where no one speaks English, and it's hard for them to get help with their homework um, if, if, their, if their mom or their dad uh, doesn't understand the work and it's um, I, th I think the number was about 40% of the population of the Rome City Schools is Hispanic a good portion I think maybe 18 or 20% of those um, of those kids are basically non-speaking or non-English speaking so it's a real challenge and you got to get the parents involved, and I think that's a great use of that facility. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's basically all I had. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Collins. Uh, Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, I've got uh, uh, on the Alcohol Control Commission meeting, uh, it was brought up about a violation of a convenience store on Shorter Avenue, and the, the committee has, has offered their recommendation. Uh, I'll let Mr. Clerk here give you the details of of what took place and all that, but uh, uh, can tell you what the recommendation was. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, right, this is the, the circumstances of this uh, hearing that the ACC held was very similar to the one from the previous meeting in February. Uh, our code enforcement officer, while on uh, the job checking on a, a, some type of code violation, discovered uh, someone drinking beer and smoking uh, at the coin-operated amusement machines at uh, Me Tienda, 611 Shorter Avenue. 
Uh, Mr. Rubin took pictures of that and reported back to us. Uh, the city called uh, representatives of the store in for a hearing before the Alcohol Control Commission, and they were present, and, and they did not dispute the claim. They apologized. Well, they didn't really apologize. They, they spoke about the infraction, and I think they've taken action with their personnel since then. But at the end of the day, the ACC did recommend that you all uh, approve a 60-day suspension of the beer package license and impose a $2,000 monetary penalty. Again, a 60-day suspension of the beer package license that would be become effective today or tomorrow, and a $2,000 monetary penalty. And that is at Metienda 611 Shorter Avenue. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. We'll need a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, recommendation from the ACC. Second. Any discussion? Great. Uh, Mayor. If I could, uh, Joe, would you mind just mention, I mean, this infraction and, and this is consistent. This is, we just recently had this and, and uh, we are being consistent with these uh, penalties. We are. That's right, Commissioner Brock. Uh, this, this penalty recommendation is consistent with the, the, uh, the same infraction that was addressed by the ACC at their February meeting. And, and we have... A, a very similar infraction that's going to be at the April ACC meeting. So you all may have another case before y'all next month. Uh, and by the way, the $2,000 penalty, that is the maximum monetary penalty that you all are allowed to impose. And in a 60-day suspension of a beer package license, uh, that, that's a strong penalty. Uh, you know, you think about some of the other penalties that are normally handed out for... Uh, the sale of alcohol to a minor, uh, and those things can, can be, uh, uh, you know, accidental, I guess, but uh, I think the ACC felt that this was uh, probably, you know, should, it, it was known or should have been known by the operators of the business. I, I was uh, questioning Joe, Mr. Mayor, in the uh, caucus whether or not he thought that the word was getting to out, especially to the Indians and the Latinos who run a lot of these stores. And, um, Mr. Clerk explained to me that everyone that come down there and get a license to operate these type stores is the rules and regulations going over with them very clearly before they're able to pay their money and get the license. Is that correct, Mr. Clerk? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, and as you all know, uh, some of these store owners and operators you know, they, they speak and read English better than others. Uh, but, you know, the, the burden is on them to, to know our rules and to follow them, but we do everything we can to make them aware of it. Right. So, Mayor, I heard uh, gaming machines uh, was part of this uh, inspection. Um, let me make sure I understand that we do not have the power to suspend those machines. Those machines belong to the Georgia Lottery Corporation. They are assigned to people who have a contract, uh, but I'd, I'd rather crawl into a tiger's cage than try to go after those machines. May I say something too, though? The code enforcement was not there for the gaming machines. They were there to uh, ask him to take his lights. They were shining toward the road, kind of hazardous to the to the drivers, and so they were. He was just in there to ask them to lower the lights, and uh, during that, he is when he found the infraction. Uh, though, I mean, I go into a lot of those stores. I travel throughout Northwest Georgia, Southern Real Estate, and I go into a lot of those stores. Um, you know, basically, how one is operated is how they're all operated. Um, our our codes here and our requirements are fairly plain and, and strict when it comes to um, alcohol, uh, the drinking of alcohol in an establishment, and then smoking. Um, and if, if you do the right amount of training, and I sat on ACC last year, we always ask the question, how are you going to train your employees? Uh, do you have training in place? Tell us how you get the ID. How do you approve someone to buy 
a six pack of beer. So the ACC does its job. Um, I think the managers that get, you know, get the license, they probably train the first couple of people and maybe train when somebody leaves. But somewhere down the line, you know, if they have turnover, the training doesn't carry all the way around. I think I, I don't like those machines. I've been open about it. But they belong, it's a deal between the Georgia Lottery Corporation. City Commission has nothing to do. The only thing that we can enforce is our package, uh, our beer license on the smoking and drinking license. There is a, a halt to any new machines coming here for the next six months. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? We have a moratorium in place. The County <laughs> Commission is meeting tomorrow night. And they're, uh, I think they're going to do the same thing that we did. Cave Spring has already done it. So I think you're going to have city and county on the same page along with Cave Springs. Mayor, can I ask one more question? I read the minutes from the Alcohol Control Commission and understand they had some in-depth discussion about regulating and supervising vape, vaping products. Um, do we have a city department that uh, supervises vaping? I know that's sort of a new, new product, but I'm very concerned about the availability and the lack of enforcement. Yeah, so we, as a part of the moratorium that we did, six-month moratorium, that is an investigative research period. There are two things that we're going to research. We're going to research what we can do when it comes to the COEL machines in terms of getting um, some control over that. And we're also going to investigate the materials that are sold in these convenience stores because as I understand it, I've had people tell me that some of those products are, uh, have some toxicity. They're not safe for kids. Kids are buying them putting them in some of these smoking devices. Sometimes they're getting the smoking devices in there and they're putting different illegal drugs in there. There's so much about that we don't know. And I had a long conversation with Allison Waters about it. And uh, she was on her way to meet with Gary Boshio. She asked Gary, the health department doesn't have any oversight. He told her that it was the Department of Agriculture. All the Department of Agriculture does is approve or they monitor the, the fuel pumps and the calibration. So in terms of the contents of the product that's in those convenience stores, there is no oversight yet. But I, we're working on, we've got a group that I'm going to be putting together. We've got a meeting this Thursday. Well, I'll tell you, that it's a good thing for the investigative period because i just seen an illustration this past week where now the vape looks just like an ink pen and it's disguised and a lot of these schools and these kids are getting clean away with it. I've, I've heard of an inc uh, incident that happened in the county schools. I heard of one that happened, I think, at Rome Middle School. So it's, um, if you go online and Google it and look at some of the problems, um, you know, I'm, I'm not in favor of govern, a local government or federal government overreaching into people's business. But the health and well-being of the citizens, somebody has to be responsible for that. And if it's not under somebody's control, then it's totally out of control. And I think that's where we are with the coam machines and some of the products that are being sold in the, the vape stores and convenience stores. So thanks to our attorney, we've got six months to investigate it. We're going to come up with some proposals and uh, just stay tuned. Mayor, this gentleman's asking to say something. If you will, go to the podium, identify yourself. Uh, I'm Billy Newby. I was just here to listen tonight, but on these the ding ding machines in the vape shops, 
Is there any kind of sales requirements on them as they would be anybody with alcohol? Because a lot of them don't even serve fuel when you're talking about the ag department getting in monitoring that. But is there any kind of ratios with these guys? Back that are sales. We, uh, there's so much we don't know yet, but we're learning. I, I mean, since I mean, when I, when I go down the street, you see them there. You don't see people in them. Uh, the old Long John Silver's building, they probably spent, what, $350,000 to build it, another quarter million to renovate it. Typically, you see one car. What's truly happening in these things? Yeah. Come at night from about 11 or 12 till 3 or 4 in the morning. That's when the traffic's there. So, but that was just my thing. Is there any kind of a yeah. offset that they're having to do there, especially the ones that don't sell fuel or you walk in and they might have $50 worth of out-of-date candy bars there. So I was just wondering. Thank yeah. you. I, I mean, I, we don't regulate any of that right now. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on the motion before us? Mr. Clark, call the roll. Commissioner Bojo? Yes. Brock? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Collins? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Okay, that uh, concludes all of our business. Well, but I've, I've got one more, Mr. Mayor. Uh, community oh. Redevelopment uh, will meet Wednesday, March 27th at 2 o'clock in the Sam King Room. That's all of mine. Thank you. At your place, you have the ethics uh, document that if you will sign and pass it down to our city clerk uh, before you leave. And I have one that you all will sign. You can swing by my desk for just a second. There's nothing else. We're adjourned. Thank you. Does he have it right there? Hey, John. Hey. So do you have, you have the other one with you? I do.